Hi, Soros. My name is Sora Christy Campbell, co-chair, co-committee chairman of Aka University. It's a pleasure to um, host this webinar for you all today on Zoom etiquette. So this call is basically about Zoom etiquette and a little bit more of Aka University. It is a new implementation from corporate, so we wanted to make sure everybody knows what Aka University is and then go into our webinar topic of the day, which is Zoom etiquette. So what is Aka University? Aki University is the entity that coordinates leadership development training with the sorority. Um, so essentially, we focus on personal and professional development of members in the chapter. And so that can be a range of leadership development, webinars, courses, sessions, or modules um, from an educational perspective, from a social perspective, um, but really the focus is around personal and professional development for your leadership. And the mission is to develop committed and exceptional leaders. So that can be on a chapter regional or international level. And so we're super excited to be the chairman and co-chairman of Aka University, myself and Sorrel Barrel, um, to essentially provide you all with the opportunity to learn more, grow more, um, and do more as it pertains to AKA. So we're extremely excited to push forward the mission and the vision of Aka University and discuss Zoom etiquette. And so something to remember as we go through this PowerPoint today or on-demand webinar is purpose without preparation is meaningless. So if you've never navigated Zoom before, if you have navigated Zoom but you're still super confused on what all these buttons and features are, have no fear, Aki University is here to save the day um, with understanding features and functionality of Zoom and also some Zoom etiquette to live by as we move forward in this virtual space. And so what matters when navigating Zoom or being or hosting a presentation, hosting a meeting or being a uh, attendee or participant in a Zoom meeting? Lighting is extremely important. Time, background and understanding the functions are also extremely important when you are in Zoom. So the first thing is lighting, right? So on the left, you see an example of bad lighting. On the right, you see an example of good lighting. The difference between the two is my back is turned towards the lighting. And so the light is off in my room. And then also my back is turned towards against the light. So when your back is against the light, it e emits this, um, shadow against your face but when you turn towards the light and the light in your the room light is on you have the ability to see your beautiful face and so lighting is extremely important when on zoom calls time is another thing which is a quote that all of us live by to be early is to be on time to be on time is to be late and to be late is unacceptable so so um there's six tips that we have for time for zoom etiquette so being on time shows respect being on time shows that you care being on time makes everything run smoothly when we're on time and we have a meeting that starts at 10 and ending at 12, if everyone doesn't get on a call until 1030, it delays our end time. And so people depend on you when you have a start time or when there's certain time frames or time limits to an itinerary, it's extremely important to adhere to those um, because there are people who may have other things to do or have truly allocated for that time and space for you. I and mean, when you're late, people can no longer do that. Your reputation is also at stake. So if somebody is relying on you, your credibility, all of these things are taken into account um, if you cannot be on time. So being on time, your reputation is attached to it. So try to be a person of integrity, a soar of integrity to ensure that um, your reputation is not diminished um, because of timeliness. And then being on time shows that you're taking it seriously. So with everything going on, navigating a virtual space in the middle of a pandemic, um, it's, it can be very hard to um, navigate your schedules. And so 
when you have that level of productivity, it shows that you are taking matters and prioritizing your schedule to show that you are taking these meetings, presentations, or even interviews seriously. And so next on our list are Zoom backgrounds. My favorite part of this webinar is because if I had the junkiest room on the planet, you would never know it with Zoom virtual backgrounds. I'm currently in New York and in less than five seconds, I can be in California. So it's super exciting. If you look up at the top right of my screen, you'll be able to see the virtual background change that I did. So without a Zoom background, it can look very junky, very cluttered. Um, if your room or where you're currently taking video is not clean, but with the Zoom background, you can be, as this picture on the bottom right, in New York City in one of the most exclusive corporate offices. Um, or like me, you can be in California, but Zoom backgrounds really provide versatility. You can simply upload a photo from Google Images or you can um, download a template from canva.com if anyone has ever heard of that. It is a marketing platform where you can create any and everything, logos, um, backgrounds, um, flyers. There's so many things that you can create on canva.com, but they have templates for, um, sorry, they have templates for Zoom backgrounds already created that you can just download. And so how to add a virtual background is that if you click this up arrow next to stop video, it'll pull up these, these, um, these options. And so when you click choose virtual background, some are already pre-uploaded on certain accounts and then others you'll have to upload. But like I said before, you can get it from Google Images or download something from canva.com. And just to touch on a couple of Zoom etiquette functionalities, the mute and unmute button. So if you're not talking or if there's a lot of background noise, the mute and unmute button is really great if you need to answer a question or make a statement and then go back on mute. Um, it really helps with the um, flow of the meeting to ensure that um, there are no distractions. Start and stop video participants, chat, reactions, share screen, meeting ID and password, personal meeting ID, and scheduling a meeting. And so with start and stop video, you have the ability to start and stop your video. If there's a lot of things going on in the background or an emergency came up, you can quickly stop your video. Um, and when you're gathered or composed, you can start your video again. Um, to interact with a meeting. Participants allows you to see everybody that's currently on the Zoom call. Chat feature allows you to message everyone or message an individual. Reactions allow you to clap for someone that says something really good or you wanna be supportive. There's also a thumbs up feature that allows you to um, agree with what someone is saying. Share screen feature I really like is how you're able to see my PowerPoint on my computer now. You can also share a portion of your computer, a portion of your web browser, um, or your entire desktop. Meeting ID and password is something that can be shared out for people to join your call or your meeting. Personal meeting ID is if it's a bit more casual or relaxed. Um, there is a static or fixed personal meeting ID that can be used for of casual meetings and then scheduling a meeting is a feature where um, if you have several meetings or different um, Zooms that you wanted to have, um, scheduling a meeting allows you to set up different dates and times for that. And so when you're actually in a Zoom meeting, you'll see all of these features or functions at the bottom of your screen. So as we previously discussed, mute and unmute are features where you can talk, and then when you don't have anything else or when you have finished, you can put yourself on mute. Um, start and stop video allows you to see yourself or allow others to see you or you can have up your profile picture. Um, when you are, when you do not have on your audio or when you do not have on your video, you will see a red line through these. And so that's how you're able to tell 
if you're on mute or not, or if you if people can see you or not based on the red line through these icons. And so the security features lets you do something, certain updates like will there be a waiting room? Can people talk in the chat? Allowing participants to rename rename themselves. Participants, if you click that icon, it allows you to see all the list, um, the running list of people that are in the current Zoom call. Chats allows you to chat with everyone on the call or specific people. Share screen allows you to share what you're looking at on your computer with everyone else. Record something else that I'm doing right now um, is that if you want people to be able to play this back, you can record this uh, for your records and save it in your files. And their reactions allows you to give someone kudos or give a thumbs up in support. And then if you are the host of the meeting, you can end the meeting. If you're not a host, this button will allow you to leave the meeting. And so this will look, you will see this on the desktop version if you are not currently in a meeting. Um, if you want to see all the meetings that you have created, that will be on your left side here. If you're looking for your personal meeting ID, that will be here. If you're looking for your meeting ID password, you would just click edit and that will show you your current password. If you want, hey, like, let me join your Zoom. Um, to provide somebody with a meeting ID and password, and most come with a phone number that you can join in on if you can't um, join via Zoom in person. Um, you will click copy invitation and all those details will be provided for you to just paste in the email or the text message. And then here allows you the super cool features to schedule a meeting, join a meeting if you don't have the zoom link you can simply insert the meeting id and password here um so zoom i think is a very user-friendly platform um geared for everybody to use if you are seeking um how to navigate a virtual space since we cannot be in person and so as we prepare to wrap up we're just going to touch on a few things to keep in mind as it pertains to zoom etiquette so one, use the video options when possible is super important or it's very helpful to the host if you show yourself to make them feel like they're not talking to an artificial intelligence voice or um, talking to themselves. So if you have the ability to, please show or use the video option when possible. Stage your video area. So make sure that your background is not cluttered um, if it is, you have the ability to use Zoom virtual backgrounds, which is super cool because you never know where I am or what my background looks like because I'm currently in this picturesque um, California area right now. And so thirdly, we say just for the occasion, working from home can be um, get you into this routine of wearing sweatpants all day long and so um, when you're preparing for an interview or you're going into a professional meeting you want to make sure that you look the part if you are having a sisterly wind down there's no need to dress up and look professional but if you are in more so of a professional setting you may want to consider dressing for the occasion even if someone can't see you from head to toe and so fourthly, stay on mute if you're not talking. Background noise can be really distracting. So once you have made your statement or answered that question, if you do not have anything else to say, please consider putting yourself on mute to um, avoid us hearing the neighbor's barking dog or um, anything of that nature, which leads me into number five, eliminate distractions. So notifications from your messaging app, ringtones, applications, phone calls, all of these things um, can make attendees feel undervalued um, or like you're not fully present in the meeting. So mitigating these distractions help to keep from interruptions, which allows a smoother meeting and a on time, in time. And so lastly, stay focused, stay on task. Like I said, um, especially being on your computer where your messages your emails everything is it can be very hard to stay on task but when you are in a zoom call it's important for you to be present so the host and all of the efforts that they made working on this presentation or this powerpoint or the meeting um doesn't feel um 
neglected or not of use. And so it's really important to stay focused, to stay engaged and to stay productive on the call until the end. And so that concludes our first webinar for Aka University. If you have any questions, you can contact myself or Sora Barrel Bailey. Um, we're really here to support you all. So if you have any feedback on our next webinar or how this one went, please definitely let us know. We're very open to feedback and we look forward to our future webinar calls and workshops and educational models. So thank you so much. It is a pleasure to serve you. On behalf of myself and Sora Barrel Bailey, thank you so much and we will see you next time, Sora.